A simple preloader is what we're going to be learning how to make here in this following tutorial. And uh, I'm going to try to make it as easy as I can for you. Uh, hopefully you'll understand it. It gets a little complicating uh, at some points, but once you've gone through it, once you get the hang of it, it's really cool. And uh, it's a really nice preloader to make. And uh, obviously I hope you get the hang of it. So first thing you want to do is download this file right here, startpreloader.fla. I will probably have it zipped up, and I will probably have it over here on my site, totvid.com. You can go there, come over here to the download section, and download it. With that being said, let's drag it into Flash. And what opens is a new file. But it's not just a new file. It's a new file with something in the library. Let's open up that library, and we have here a folder called Photo Blur. And what I've put together is just this blurring sequence of these two clouds, or this one cloud, blurring from out of focus to in focus. And uh, it's a pretty big file, which is why we're going to use it here to preload. I mean, even on T1, it takes quite a while to download. So, drag that master MC out onto your stage, and center it. We're going to come up here under Window, Align. Grab the Align palette. Make sure you have two stage selected, okay? And al align the uh, horizontal and vertical edges there. Excuse me. Close up the Align palette there and move it off the screen or move it out of your way. In my case, I'm moving it off screen. So here we go. We have this Master Movie Clip. Rename the first layer Master, okay? I just put that together. I didn't want to have to bore you watching me build something. Of course, you can make something of your own if you like. Just make sure it's got hefty enough uh, size that you're really going to, you know, there's going to be a time there when it actually has to download. Okay. We're going to insert another layer here, and we're going to call it Preloader. And what we're going to do is also create a folder in the library called Preloader, just to keep track of all of the elements that go into the Preloader. This isn't a necessary one, but I like to do it because I like to stay organized. Move the Preloader off screen there, and... Um, we're also going to turn the visibility of that master layer off just so we're working here on preloader and we're sure we're not messing anything up. Set your stroke to black and fill to black and draw out a nice rectangle here. Something you would see for a preloader basically. And we're going to grab our trusty align palette again and we're going to align it to center in every way just like that. And now, select just the fill. If I zoom in on this, select just the fill. I can select just the fill, and if I cut it, you're going to see it's going to leave the stroke. Just select the fill, because in your swatches palette, you ought to have this metal gradient here. We're going to fill it with that metal gradient. Now, if you don't have that metal gradient, what that means is you're not starting with the start file, because it's not a default gradient. It's something I added as a swatch to this file, so we would be able to work with it. All right, come up here and grab the Gradient Transform tool and select that gradient. Now, here's where it might help to uh, put some snapping on. Uh, I'm still not going to use it, but what some snapping would do if you put the snapping on is it will um, allow you to snap to perfectly straight up and down. Right there. No, I'm still a little off. And what will happen if you don't have a perfectly straight up and down, you'll really, really be able to see it with something like this. Right there is perfectly straight up and down. So do your best to get it straight up and down, and then just crunch these handles in to about the stroke. All right, so select that fill, just the fill, not the stroke. Go up to Modify, convert this to a symbol. We're going to convert it to a movie clip. Now here's something very important. This registration point thing right here, make sure it is set to the left center. Okay, so select that little black dot, not the right center, the left center. And we can name this Preloader Fill. The name can be anything you want it to be. And then we will just drag it right here into the preloader folder. We're also going to select that stroke there. I'm going to zoom in so I can really get it. Okay, I've selected the stroke. I'm going to convert that to a symbol as well because we're going to uh, be using that later on for something. So we'll call this stroke MC. <laughs> what else? Okay, so there's the movie clip artwork wise. Make sure you had that registration point set to the center and left-hand side of this, okay? So, now let's get action scripting. The first thing we need to do to prepare for the action script is to select that fill, okay? Make sure it's not the stroke, the fill, and give it the inst an instance name. It can be anything. I'm going to name mine fill 
underscore MC. Uh, those are both capital letters. Now we're going to create a new layer and we're going to name it AS for action script. We're going to select that blank keyframe, come up here under window and select actions. And here comes my actions palette. Okay, now what we have to do here is first thing, put a stop action in. The stop action isn't going to do anything for the time being because you can see we only have one frame, therefore it's not moving, so it is stopped by default. But we're going to end up dropping a second frame in here, so we're going to need that stop action in just a minute. Now, what we need to do is we need to make an interval, okay? So we need to give this interval a name to start, so we're going to call this loader interval. Let's just name it int. Loader int, that's with a capital I there, equals set interval. This is making the interval. Okay, and now we have to name the function that it's going to be associated here with. And we're going to name that function, we're going to name it L bar, with a capital L for loader bar. I just want to keep this short, so hopefully I can keep the entire thing here on the screen for you guys to see. And put a comma there, and we're going to, it's going to check every 10 milliseconds is what that is. And now we're going to make that function. So just type function L bar. Open and close parenthesis. Now put open curly bracket and close curly bracket down there on line five. Now come in here on line four, and we need to type what is called if statement. So we're going to say if get bytes loaded. Open and close parenthesis. Make sure you put them there. Is greater than or equal to. Here we go. Get bytes total. Open and close parenthesis again. Then put a, another closed parenthesis. That closed parenthesis, this closed parenthesis goes for this one here to enclose this entire statement, okay? Because this is just its own separate statement right here, okay? Just like get bytes loaded. And now this is an if statement, so we need another set of curly brackets. So we're going to put an open curly bracket, hit enter twice, put another curly bracket, and you're going to see. Here we now have these two extra curly brackets here. This one goes with this one way up here. And this closing curly brace goes with that one right there. Okay, so now we're saying if the bytes loaded are greater than or equal to the bytes total, we want you to do this. And what we want it to do is play because if the bytes loaded equal the bytes total, it's completely loaded. So we're gonna say play, and we also just want it to clear that interval. And we're gonna name that interval which we named loader int. Okay, semicolon after that. Now, you remember we gave our fill here an instance name called fill MC there. <laughs> I forgot it. We want to put that right here, right on line 8. We want to say fill underscore MC because what we want to do is we want to take the amount loaded and transfer it into a percentage which this fill MC will show us, okay? Hence the loading bar, okay? So if the, if the movie clip is 50% loaded, we want that loading bar to be 50% across the screen, or 50% across the area we have it set to go across. So we want to say fill underscore MC dot underscore X scale. Then here we say equals get bytes loaded. Make sure you put those open and closed parentheses there, divided by get bytes total, whoops, make sure you spell total right, open and close parenthesis there, now we're going to put an asterisk in, which is the computer multiplication sign, we're going to multiply that by 100, and then put a closing uh, parenthesis there, and of course a semicolon at the end of every line of action script you write, okay, so we can just quickly check our script syntax and we have no errors. So let's just go over this real quick. We've got a stop action, we've got a lo an interval being set here, and that interval is loader interval, and the function it's associated with is L bar, which is this function here, and it's, it's checking every 10 milliseconds, okay? Now this function is saying if get bytes loaded is equal to or greater than get bytes total, we want you to play and clear that interval. You can see the end of the statement is right there at that closing curly bracket. Next, we want you to take this fill MC, we want the X scale of that to equal get bytes loaded divided by the bytes total times 100. Okay, so 
Nothing's going to happen yet. I'm going to set it up just real quick so we can view what's going to happen. And uh, then we'll do it really the way I want to do it. It's not quite this fast. Select all of the frames here right after the first keyframe, okay? So I just have one frame. It's just basically frame two selected on all three layers. And I'm just going to say insert frame. So now we just have two frames here. I'm going to take my master clip, which is right here, okay, right here, and I'm going to drag it over to frame two. So now there's none of that on frame one, just the preloader, okay? But the preloader is also on frame two. We don't want that. So we're going to right click there and say insert blank keyframe. So that goes away. So the preloader is on frame one, and our content is on frame two. Come up here to frame two, and this, yeah, frame two of action script layer, excuse me. Bring up the action script palette again. And you have to make a new blank keyframe there. You can't just put actions on a regular old frame. All we want to type in here is a simple stop action, just like that. Okay, so once this is done, remember this is stopping right away. Once the movie, lo once the movie loads, excuse me, this is stopping. And then once the bytes are loaded to a point where it's going to play, it's going to play. But we want it to stop right here on the layer that we have our content on. Okay, so let's just check that out real quick. If we just view it, it's just going to kick right into the movie. But the trick is we want to simulate the download. We can come up here to view and hit download settings. See, I've got mine set to T1. You can just hit simulate download or the hotkey for it is just command or control enter. Okay, you're going to see what that's doing. Our bar is loading according to the amount it's loaded. Okay, so once it gets around halfway point, it's going to be half loaded. I'm not going to sit here and watch the entire thing. So... Let's get on to the next part of this tutorial, and uh, what that is going to be is we're going to make some dynamic text here to display a little message telling it's loading, as well as percentage. Okay, so you can you'll be able to tell exactly how much uh, if the movie is loaded, whether or not it's thirty percent or seventy-six percent or one hundred percent. So <clears throat> here's what we need to do: we need to create two new layers here. We're going to name one percent, and we whoops are going to name the other one. Dynam underscore txt. So we're also going to do a little bit on dynamic text, which is going to be kind of fun to do. We're going to actually select that dynamic text layer first. We're going to grab our text tool, and we're going to draw a text field out right about that size. We're going to come over here to the properties palette, and you can see you can select between static text is what it's set to by default. Select dynamic text. That's what we want to play with, and set the size to 12. I just have an Arial font, black, and bold as my uh, style there. Now, we're going to make a vari variable for this, excuse me. We're going to call that text var. It's one of the advantages to having dynamic text. Um, that's new, though, in the last few versions. I don't remember when that started exactly. So, make that your variable. And now, we're going to also give this an instance name of text, capital I, N-S-T. So, text inst, as in text instance. So... There we go. We've created that dynamic text. I'm going to grab my align palette again. I just want to align this right there exactly to the center above that preloader bar there. Now, we're going to come back into ActionScript. F9, by the way, is your hotkey to open up your ActionScript palette, if you've been wondering how I've been getting it up so fast. We're going to come here, and we're going to place this right underneath this function, okay? So right above this if statement. We're going to hit enter once, and right here on line 4 it is now, just above the if statement. What we're going to do is we're going to, whoops, wrong line for that. I'm thinking too far ahead. Come up here to line 2, and type in text var, that's the name of that variable. Capitalization matters in action script, very important, that's a capital V. Cap, uh, capital var, text var, excuse me, equals Put a parenthesis. Now we're going to say period, period, colon, colon, loading. You can do it in all caps if you want. We're not. Two more colons and two more periods. I'm just doing that just as a little bit of a decoration to the text there, those periods and colons. And uh, drop a semicolon at the end of that line. You're going to see what this is going to do now when I publish this movie. Is we're going to see loading there. Okay, you can see it right there across the screen. Well, you can't really see it now, but I'm just going to hit Control-Enter or Command-Enter twice. There we go. And you can see it says loading. Now, my text field is much too big for that, so I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. So so it's more, you know, so it's, so it's closer, I should say, to the top of our actual preloader. Right? I still want it to be closer. 
Let's try that. See how that works for us. That's perfect. Just like that is what I wanted. And looking at it now, I want to change that text to be all caps. So that's easy. Come up here, just select this text, and type it in all caps. Just like that. Now if we test the movie, there we go. You can see loading is in all caps. Now we've got a problem. I don't know if you can see it, but oops, here we go. This loading stays here even when the main movie loads. Obviously, I don't want that to happen because you want all of the traces of the preloader to go away once you have loaded all of your content. So, we can do that pretty easily. I'm not going to come in here like I did with the preloader and insert a blank keyframe. I'm going to do it through action script. So, I'm going to bring up the action script palette again. And this is something I want to happen once the movie has loaded. After it started to play, we want... Now, this is where we're going to use, remember, we gave an instance name as well. This text var here is the variable we gave that dynamic text. We also gave that dynamic text an instance name right here of text, I-N-S-T, with a capital I. So we're going to say text, I-N-S-T, move myself completely up here on screen, text instance dot underscore visible equals false. Okay, so the visibility of text instance false. It's not visible. If we wanted it to be visible, we could type true, but that would be pointless because it already is visible. It's visible by default. So we just want to get rid of the visibility of that. And now that we know that we can get rid of visible things like that, we're going to do that with the preloader. But real quick, let's just test the movie to make sure it does go away. And you can see it does go away. Okay. So we now we're going to get rid of this keyframe here. We're going to clear that keyframe, and you can see the preloader now stays. Oops. Let's lock up that master layer so I don't accidentally select it. We're going to select the preloader, deselect the fill, and now all that I've selected is the stroke, okay, because I just selected the entire thing right there on the preloader layer, and just hold down shift and select the fill, and that deselects it because remember it's already selected and now all you have selected is the stroke you can see here instance of stroke MC is what we have selected and let's just call the stroke MC it's capital MC get rid of the properties palette for a second let's come up here to the action script layer open up the action script palette and let's just copy this code right here this code that makes our visibility go to false and we're gonna create two new lines here the first one, the first thing we want to go away is fill underscore MC, I believe is our, whoops, is the uh, instance name, excuse me, for the fill of the preloader, and then the preload, or the instance name we just created, which is stroke MC, and that's for that stroke MC movie clip. The instance name can be anything you want, just once you make the instance name, you have to make sure you use that one in your action scripting. And fill underscore MC. Wonderful. Okay, so now we see that when it kicks over to where the content's loaded, everything still stays. So let's just quickly test it, and we will check to see. You can see it shows up here. Let me just hit Command and Control Enter again to quickly skip through, and you can see when the content loads, it all goes away. It's perfect. All right. Now, last thing we want to do is create a little counter here that's going to show us our percentage. So select the percent layer. Once again, we're going to rely on our dynamic text here. Draw out a dynamic text field, just like that. Open up your properties palette, and we're going to set the size to, oh, let's say 25. Okay. And uh, give this one an instance name, I believe. Let's give this an instance name of percent %INST. If we need a variable, I'll come back and give it that later. Okay. So let's resize this dynamic text field to make it a little bit smaller. Just like that. Okay, so this dynamic text field is percent %INST. Let's go back to our action script layer here, which is now full of lots of action script. Let's open our actions palette. And now we need to put this little bit of code we're going to put in here to make this percentage right here underneath our function, okay? But above the if statement. That's right here on line 5 if you've been following along. So we're going to say percent I N S T is what we just called it. Dot text, and this equals math dot round. Okay, that's just a built-in flash thing. Parentheses, and this is where we're going to say get bytes loaded 
Open and close parentheses, divided by get bytes. Oops. Total. Open and close parentheses. Now we are going to say times 100. Close that parentheses off. Remember that this parentheses out here goes to this one here for math round. And then we're going to add a percentage sign. So we're just going to say plus. Make sure you put this in quotes. Okay. Percent sign. Okay. Let me just show you. Let's put the money sign there, and I'll show you what would happen. Okay, so what we just wrote in here is percent instance, which is that instance name for that dynamic text field, dot text equals math dot round, and then we put this get bytes loaded divided by get bytes total times 100, and then we're adding the money sign to the end of that as a text piece. And you'll see what that does in just a second here. Let me just select this dynamic text, grab your align palette once again, and align it to the middle of the stage. Okay? Let's see what happens. There we go, okay? So now it's showing up there. Ten dollars, twelve dollars, okay, but that really doesn't make any sense to anybody. So that's why, generally speaking, we use the percentage sign. Whoops. There we go. Select the first frame. And if we would stop playing around, here we go. There we go. Percentage sign is always the easiest to understand, so be sure to use that. And now if we test it, you're going to see exactly what I mean. Okay, you can see we've got our uh, percentage loading here, as well as our bar moving along steadily. And um, one last thing we need to do is watch what happens. When this loads, this doesn't go away. So you know the old trick. Come up here to our actions palette. Bring that into view. Whoops. And once again here, once it's loaded, we're going to copy another one of those statements and paste it. And here we're going to say, we'll just copy the instance name here. Copy that and paste it over stroke MC. Paste it. Let's just check to make sure we haven't made any errors. No errors. Close up the actions palette. And publish that movie. Whoops. By the way, when you publish the movie, I, I've been doing this the whole time using hockey. Command or Control Enter, or on the Mac it's probably Command Return. Okay. So we're going to hit Control Enter, and then hit Control Enter once more to simulate the download. And we'll sit here and watch it download. While it's downloading, I'll just thank you for uh, sitting through this one. Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you've come away with some more understanding of how to use Flash and uh, what a great tool it really is. And uh, hopefully you'll go check out my site, tutvid.com. I've got lots of other great stuff there. And... Uh, Hopefully this will finish loading so you don't have to listen to me any longer. <laughs> ah, here we go. All right. And there you go. It finished loading. Everything goes away. And this loads up just like that. And you can see there's a subtle animation that it's doing. But really, the reason this is such a big file is it's two high-resolution photos that I resized in Flash. And just a quick tip, never resize your photos in Flash. Always do it in something like Photoshop or Fireworks or something of that nature. Okay, so that's it for this one. I uh, hope you learned a lot about uh, preloaders. I went through my little rant just before while it was loading, so I'll see you next time.